Captain Fathom. Thunderfire Island. Captain. Captain. Captain Fathom. Oh, please. Aviator and his craft, eh? Yes, Honorable Chang. The aircraft was completely demolished. And the aviator? He was shot a number of times, sire. He fell from cliff, flaming to his death. Ah, so, to his death. And this, you know from close inspection of his rifleless body, eh? Well? No, Honorable Sire. The body has not been recovered yet. Ah, so. Then it cannot truthfully be said that the aviator is dead, can it? And arrive, he is free to broadcast to the world the truth of our island, right? Ah! Recover the body, or you all die. Oh, what? What? have to wait a million years. Well, you tell me what good we're doing him here, alive or dead. If he's alive, he's got to know where to find us. What? That's Biff. That's Biff. What in the name of Elmo is he doing out here? Glory be, look. It is Biff. He's got the captain. Pete, Freddy, man the airlock. We've got a fish coming in with a skipper. He's in a bad way, Scotty, but he's alive. Is he? Does it? Careful now. His breathing is returning to normal, but it's a miracle. Aye. Hit in the shoulder, the arm, a cracked rib. Look, he's coming around. Captain, can you hear me? You're okay, Skipper. Do you know where you're at? You're back aboard the Argonaut, Captain. How do you feel? If you'd take that mask off his face, he might be able to answer. How, how did I get here? Biff brought you back, sir. You had a hammerlock on his fin. Biff? Save your breath, Captain. Oh, I don't remember. No, don't try to sit up. I'm... I'm... Oh, get the number of that truck. He shouldn't be sitting up. Please, Captain. You're pretty cut up, Skipper. You'd have bleeded to death if it wasn't for the sea pressure. Ah, uh, I remember. They hit the sea dart. Crashed. Got out before she blew, then... Then they hit me. I fell. I, I remember falling. There was a ship. No registry. Had some radiation shielding. That's it. There was no Tembler. That island was brought about by controlled atomic blasts. But why, Captain? The pitch blend ore? Of course. A major new source of uranium. But the ore could be mined undersea. Oh, the uranium was only part of it. But an island in the mid-Atlantic, between Africa and South America, that's a strategic missile base. Okay, we have to move fast now. It's adrift at 50 feet. The current will move us toward the island. Yes, sir. Miss Perkins, 
I want to talk with the Supreme Justice of the World Court. Hotline connection with the heads of the major powers. Yes, sir. Pete, Freddy, I want short-range ballistic missiles in the launcher tubes. Right, sir. Okay, everyone on his toes now. World War III begins or ends right here. in the matter. I understand. Thank you, sir. SSIN 730 out. They gave you nothing, Captain. They left you wide open. Oh, they gave me an injunction. What more could they do? Okay, let's get on to the nervous business. Miss Perkins, station check. Yes, sir. Bearing and range marked on target. You want the same frequency? Affirmative. Well, don't worry. They've been monitoring all this. Pete, full ordinance or standby alert, sir. Ready? Full engine power and reserve, Captain. Heat force field, Scotty. Force field. Okay, we're ready for just about anything. Let's get on with it. They're probably wondering what's keeping us. This is SSIN 730 to unidentified vessel lying off Bellefontan Seamount. Over. Seamount, come in. Over. A person calling unidentified vessel. We are United States freighter, city of um, San Francisco. Over. Oh, that's a hot one. Unidentified vessel. By authority of the World Court, you are hereby enjoined from further activity and your officers and crew placed under arrest. We understand. Your command is directed to put out on a small boat with all ship's papers and stand by for further instructions. Affirm. Over. As you wish. We understand. I'll just bet you do. Fire control has a fix on the submarine fire. Ugh. Await my signal. One shot from a flare pistol. Then destroy them. Yes, sir. At least two of them are sharpshooters, I'll bet. Captain. There's no other way, Scotty. They're trapped and they've got to make a move. If they hand over their papers, they're dead. If they hit me, you hit back fast before they blow you out of the water. But you don't have to decoy. You're all beat up. I can... It's the captain's privilege to take the fun jobs. Now help me to the airlock. I said I'm going after him. Open this thing up. You're not going step one, miss. Captain's orders. Well, I'm not under captain's orders. What's the matter with you types? You think he's made of cement? He'll bleed all over the Atlantic before he gets back. If he gets back. We are 50 feet underwater. I'm the original beach bunny. Now open this thing up. Place your ship's papers and identification on a life preserver. Set the preserver adrift and back off 200 yards. Uh, first, we must see your credentials. Uh, do you have credentials? Hit the deck, Captain! Ah! Oh. You to, to, Sammy Bassall Jr., you're rotten to the quick. But a million laughs, right? This is the government's new human system support facility, an effort to establish a life center for an underseas colony. The project is still in an early stage of development. And what you see now are the surface vessels, pumps, and power stations necessary to supply an army of underseas workers with oxygen, electricity, and fresh water. When Operation Utopia is complete, these life support facilities will be permanently located on the ocean bottom. Now let's switch to our underseas cameras. This is the construction site on the ocean bottom at a depth of nearly 1,200 feet. A year from now, this area should be a fair-sized undersea city. To withstand the great pressures of this depth, structural members are massive, many times stronger than those used on land. This crane operator works in a pressurized cabin. He also wears a pressure suit, 
as a backup safety feature. Pressure suits are worn by all the workers, each with its own oxygen supply, power pack, and booster system. The booster system is like the power steering in your automobile. If a worker starts to move his arm, his suit automatically boosts the movement. Without this power boost, workers would tire from the tremendous pressures in less than an hour. This is how they get around with their power packs. Much of the ocean bottom is fine silk many feet deep. It can't support weight, so this mammoth machine is sucking it up and piping it to the surface. Here it's piped onto barges. Then the barges are towed several miles away and their loads dumped. Silk removal will be a never-ending job in this underseas community. Ocean currents are always bringing in a fresh supply. And the ocean currents themselves are a problem. To withstand their great force at this depth, some buildings will anchor on steel piers driven many feet into the ocean bottom. Their floors will be located off the bottom to avoid the shifting silt. This mammoth machine is laying down a finished flooring of concretite, which hardens instantly. This is an area called the sink. When this region was above sea level, it was probably a lake. But a year from now, it will be dotted with homes. This is Operation Utopia's residential section. Like most building developments on dry land, there is earth people. Tons of it. This huge earth mover is grading the ocean floor to... What's happening? It's sinking through the bottom. Falling out of sight. This is Marine Relay, over. Marine Relay, this is 730 Argonaut, go ahead. Argonaut, priority one, Red CX, standing by. Roger, go ahead. A coded message, Captain? Yeah, sounds like it. Marine Relay, we copy. Argonaut, out. From the Federal Bureau of Marine Investigation, Captain. Uh, sound off. Urgent rendezvous, 843 Bravo. Uniform, 1830 hours. It's signed Victor. 1830. Uh, we'll have to hustle. Aye, and so will Victor if he's coming from stateside. Well, he can do it by SST. New heading, Ronnie. 85 True. All ahead, V10. All ahead, V10. mind the store while I'm gone. Aye, Captain. Who do you suppose it's all about, Scotty? Meet me, Sonny. But the government just sent one fellow a fair piece around the world in a $30 million airplane to talk with a skipper. So it must be important. Man, you know everything, don't you? Aye, except in what's going on. Comes the hovercraft, the captain's private taxi. You can mind the store while I'm gone, Scotty. Aye, Captain. Good luck to you, Skipper. What's this mysterious mid-ocean rendezvous all about, Vic? Operation Utopia. Heard of it? Yeah, that's the government's underseas colony project. It's got troubles. I've heard about that, too. The latest accident was an earth mover that fell through the bottom where the bottom was supposed to be solid. There's something behind all this. Sabotage? It has to be. This is a big project, an important one. There are a dozen countries that would like to see us goof it. What do you want from me? Find the trouble and put a lid on it. That's all. Argonaut, this is Papa. Over. Hi, Papa. Go ahead. Scotty, I'm off on a solo sightseeing trip. Wrap up the job and put in for home port. Over. Will you be getting a ride home, Captain? Over. It's included, Mother dear. Good luck, Skipper. Argonaut out. That's W.P. Chesterfield, the contractor on the project. Would you believe it? He looks more like a circus clown. He probably was once. Actually, he's a promoter. Why did you go for him? It was open bidding, and he was the low one. 
too low. He'll go bust on this project. And nobody goes bust without a reason, huh? You figure he sold you out for a bundle. I figured nothing. All I'm saying is this bird, Chesterfield, is the most unlikely nut in the world for this job. <laughs> well, I'm glad you haven't any fixed opinions. I told you not to mess around in the sink, WP. Look what you bought. Another accident. Cause you a greeter and a driver. Ain't good, steward. You call this a hot cup of tea? I've seen more steam coming out of a goldfish bowl. What a very hard boil underwater, Mr. Chesterfield. You know what's going to happen, don't you? The governor's going to come out and start poking around. And there goes your big dream project. Terrible stuff. Somebody's always trying to poison me. Are you listening to me, WP? If the government starts poking into your operation, why? Answer your buzzer, will you? I thought I heard a buzzing. Go away. Mr. Chesterfield, we just... My good man, you are interrupting my afternoon tea. I operate on a tight schedule, sir. It's 8 o'clock at night, WP. It is. Upon my word, where's the afternoon gone? Sir, uh, we just got a call from a Navy aircraft. There's an investigator coming in in about 15 minutes. This is your fault, Mr. Slag, sir. I pay you to keep such people off my back. I've been trying to tell you. That this last accident did it. If you, well, I told you not to mess around in the sink now. I'm a busy man. I operate on a tight schedule. Haven't got time for investigators and such. He should have made an appointment. I'm not gonna cover for you. The thought never occurred to me, my boy. However, now that you mention it. Expected, Captain. Uh, if you're just climbing to this pressure suit. You're getting plenty of air there, Captain? Fine. Uh, that's quite a sight. It's a regular city, sir. Or will be. I'm expected. Which one has the zip gun? 